come out yesterday too. So if you haven't signed up for Edpuzzle, please do so through the link that I shared. <clears throat> that sends you directly to a pro account. If you already have Edpuzzle, like I had already been using it for a few years before this, um, if you'd already had Edpuzzle and you, um, you could still click on that link and it'll upgrade your account to pro. This was one of those um, things that we're looking for minimal amounts of apps that we can use because of this new ad law 2d that's coming out um, so this is an app that or a website a program that people can use all the way through you can use it in pre-k you can use it with seniors so for me it was a no-brainer um, i know a lot of people really liked it the only thing people complained about was the fact that we didn't have a pro account so they could only have 20 videos at a time so now we have a pro account so you can have unlimited videos so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a quick overview. I know I sent you guys um, the video, the little presentation last night, um, unless you just signed up this morning or late last night, and I could send that along as well. So let's talk about what Edpuzzle is. Um, Edpuzzle allows you to take any video, any video, and create it into your lesson. So you can use a YouTube video. You can use a Khan Academy video. You can use a meet recording that you had created yourself. Any video you have, it allows you to create a lesson. Now, this was really good in the beginning. Um, like before, I would use this. Oh, Stacy. Um, I, I really liked this in the beginning because it allowed me to kind of do some flipped classroom stuff, right? I could do my lecture. I could do like a 10-minute lecture. Here are the notes. Um, what we did was in math, we'd send the kids home. Their homework was a note page. We gave them the notes, and then we did our lecture at home. Um, I did this with Sandy Bernard. The two of us would take turns. The kids would take notes at home. They'd go through the, um, the Ed Puzzle. And then when they come back, we were able to do more hands-on activity with math. So that's how I was using it before. Um, and now it's, it's a little different, right? We're now doing remote instruction. So this allows us to still do those videos, still um, send videos home with the kids, make sure they watch them, because within Edpuzzle, they cannot fast forward. They cannot go to another tab and allow the video to keep playing. So if you're in Edpuzzle, you're like, I'm just gonna let this run. You go to another tab, the video immediately stops playing. So that doesn't work. Okay. So it keeps the kids on. It also tells you, even if they answer all the questions, if the kids have 100 on okay. all their multiple choice questions, it still tells you how much of the video they watch. So let's say they only, you have like three questions at the beginning and the rest of the video is, you know, important stuff, but you don't have any questions. It tells you if they didn't finish the video. It also tells you how long they spent on the video. So if a kid okay. goes through and has all multiple choice and they get them all wrong, and you look through the video is four minutes and 15 yeah. seconds long, yeah. and they spent well, four minutes and yeah. 40 seconds yeah, on the video, you might tell them they need to spend more time on it. Yep. So thank okay. you for the question. Um, how do all these things fit together? Edpuzzle, Clever, et cetera. So Edpuzzle is a program online uh, similar to Google Slides, Google Classroom. Um, Clever is our single sign-on. That's kind of like if you use Pinterest. It keeps everything together, and the kids can just click on it, and it signs them in. So that's how they're different. Um, Clever is kind of like the home page of all the bookmarks. You can add Edpuzzle to Clever. If you're using Clever, you can add a link in there and then it will take them directly to Edpuzzle. Sure. But if your kids are using Google Classroom, Edpuzzle really works well with Google Classroom. So I would suggest doing it that way. But if it doesn't, you can post Edpuzzle on Clever and the kids, it'll take them to Edpuzzle and then in there it'll show what is assigned to them. So let's start out how to yeah. log in. If you have not logged in already using the link or you've never logged in before, um, you're gonna use that yeah. link, right? Okay. But once you've okay. done that, you're yeah. just gonna click on the login and it tells you ready for class, teacher or student. You can join as a student if you wanna see what it looks like on the other side. <clears throat> I'm gonna join as a teacher and I'm going to sign in with Google. I'm gonna use my Homer Central account. Maybe. All right. 
So when you get to Edpuzzle, this is your home page. And the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add some classes to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the button at the top right. It says My Classes. I am going to click that. Now, again, <clears throat> you have a couple options here. The one that I'm going to re recommend is using Google Classroom just because it automatically does it. And I'm going to show you down the road. It also automatically inputs the grades right into Google Gradebook. It's a lot easier. You can add kids separately if you're gonna if you don't use Google Classroom already, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm gonna go into add a new class and I'm gonna click Google Classroom. From here, it's gonna give me the options. I can go through and click all the classes that I want to add. You can see, so you can click multiple at once. And when you're done. You're going to hit import classes because it'll light up once I've clicked it. There it is. I'm going to import my classes and it'll be there. Now, I already imported my Google Classroom for beginners. Now, let's say you want to add a class, but you don't want to, you don't use Google Classroom. You're going to click on add new class and you're going to hit create new class. Now, from here, you're going to add it. So, You don't have to give a description. And you have two types. <clears throat> the first is classic. So that's where you get to use all the videos and such. The second one is open. Now, if we were still in school, this might be a good one to do if you were doing it all together. Quick practice. It doesn't allow you to keep all the kids' scores and stuff like that. Basically, anyone could join. It's no account required. So the kids go to Edpuzzle and they just put a class code in and it does that one lesson. This one too, let Edpuzzle generate students' nicknames. That's so you can use it with the Edlock 2D. But for now, what I'm doing is I'm going to enter classic. And again, this is only if you're not using Edpuzzle. So now you do have to go through and you do have to have the kids join using a class code. So you can either email that to the parents to join, you know, edpuzzle.com. I am a student. Here's my class code. You can have them visit this link. You can share it on mail. So I'm going to go with the idea that I'm going to use my Google Classroom for beginners. So that's how to add a class. All right. Let's talk about how to add content. Let's say I have a question. I want to add a, um, a video. So there are multiple ways to find videos. All right. You can see here this is the main page. Let's start over here on the left content. First of all is the curriculum button. When you click on curriculum, you can search by school. You can also search by grade level, subject level. Subjects by grade, subjects, um, or videos by subject, videos by grade. There's tons of stuff that's already made. Just to give you a little hint, when you look at this video right here, I know the video is just under five minutes long. There are currently 10 questions or notes in this video. And this is the name of it. I can click on this button right here. And when I do that, I have the options to edit it, copy it, or unselect. So edit means I can change it and make it my own. Copy means I'm going to copy it to my stuff. So let's say I, I like this video it's under five minutes. It's already got 10 questions. I'm going to hit copy. When I do that, I can automatically watch it. I can automatically assign it to my students, or I can move it. So let's see. It's going to be in my content now. Here's my content. There it is right there. It showed up. So now I can go in, and I can edit it. I can do whatever I need. From here, if I want to organize it, you can see I have my content all through here. I can organize my content by making folders. You can make folders within folders. So here's my math stuff. It doesn't allow you to drop and drag, but I can click this. I can then click move to folder. I can click math. And then I can move. You see here, it also gives you the option to do a new folder. So I could go through and do it that way. So if you're one of those people who needs to be super organized, 
you can also do it that way. Um, the other way to search for content, let me go back to content, right? Content home. The other thing you can do, which is really nice because it allows teachers to collaborate, is you can search by your school. Now, I'm still attached to the junior high. So you'll see here, Homer Junior High School, and that's why it's important you join with the link that we sent. There are 27 teachers that have joined. I'm going to throw them out of the box here. All subject areas. Here are the teachers that have joined. So when I was working before, I was working with Sandy Bernard. So I'll pick on her. So I can click on Sandy's and I can see what videos that she has, what videos she's made, what she's edited. Let's say we're co-teaching together, but I have a different class. I taught the 15-1 class. She taught the eighth grade regular class. I can click on this and I can then edit it to, for my own liking so my kids can see the same video, but maybe I give them different questions or I can copy it to my stuff and then I can assign it to my kids. So we can work together creating different videos and then share them within the school. So that's a really nice thing to look at too. Again, my content shows you all the things that I have created or I have. You'll see here, this is a video that I made on Meet and posted on YouTube. I have that there. Got all different stuff in here because I've been doing this a while, so there's all sorts of stuff from the last few years. Now, other way you can do content is you can search by channel. Ed Puzzle itself has a channel. You can go on YouTube, you can go to Khan Academy, National Geographic, TED Talks, all these different things, okay? But one thing that I found really helpful, and I am going to maybe share this in chat is there's an extension, uh, a Chrome extension that works directly with Edpuzzle. So if you add this extension, see if I can get this to work. Tim asked if we join in the link in the email, does it mean we have a pro account? Yep, Tim, it does. Our whole, um, our whole school, the whole district has pro now. We got a whole district license, so we're good. So now there's the Chrome link. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. When I go into YouTube, maybe. I go into YouTube and I wanna find a video or I know of a video that I've saved that I really like using with my kids. You can bring up any video once it loads. And there'll be a little button at the bottom. You know what, I'm gonna exit out of this. I am working on the how-to sheet for um, Edpuzzle. I just haven't finished it yet. So I'm gonna bring this over. This is what I have right now. So. You can see here, download the Chrome extension. I put it on there for you guys. Let's see how I brought up one of my videos. Right at the bottom here, edit with Edpuzzle. That button will automatically pop up. So all you have to do is once you have that extension, click on that and make sure, here's what I figured out. Make sure you're already logged into Edpuzzle because if you're not, it'll um, it'll give you a, an error message. So log into Edpuzzle and go to YouTube, search for the stuff that you want. And once you do that, you can edit with Edpuzzle and it'll automatically bring you in there and you can do what you need to do. So from there, let's talk about editing, okay? Editing and puzzle. There's a couple of different things you can do. I'm going to edit, this is one that I found this morning, but it was really cool. It's called Mr. Empathy. There's no words in it, so I thought it'd be perfect for me to edit. I'm going to click the edit button in the bottom right, and it gives me a couple options. The first thing I can do to edit it is I can make it shorter. So I know that at the end of this, there's kind of an advertisement. So I'm going to get rid of that. It shows me the preview of it. All right. And then it shows me the total new time, right? Because I edited it. If there's something at the beginning that's kind of slow or I made a mistake or I had someone the other day say, oops, I forgot I left my camera running and I have like five minutes at the end, you can just cut it off. I've done these videos with some of my meets that were an hour long and I've been able to cut things in the beginning and in the end. Um, the only problem from there is that I, I'm not able to share them just as a video. The kids have to go into Edpuzzle to watch them. That's the only issue I found. All right, so I cut the end off a little bit. The next thing you could do is voiceover. 
Now, with voiceover, you can record um, your voice talking over the actual video. So, if I start playing. I want to put a note in here for my students. You're going to notice that when I make an audio note, it's going to go over the audio. There's no way to, to not do this. Watch what happens when this man meets other people. So now there's my recording. I can preview it. If I don't like it, I can hit the delete. If I go over here, I can preview it. And you can see where it is. You can click and drag to move it. See what it looks like when it happens. You can hear it is a little glitchy. Um, you want to play with it a little. That's only if you feel the need to talk over what's happening. It did get rid of the sound in there, which I may not like. I mean, I kind of like the music. I think it's important. So now let's talk about questions. If I want to add questions to this. I don't know if it'll. So the man's walking down the street. He sees this red balloon. And then there's a little boy. So now the man feels empathy towards the little boy. I want to make sure I put a note in there that my students pay attention to that. So I'm going to click on note. And there are two ways you can add a note. You can add text right here. And or you can add a voice note. The boy made the man feel happy. So then I can hit save. Again, right here, it gives you opportunity for bold, italics, underline, superscript, subscript. You can add links within here. You can add images and you can add equations. So I'm going to hit save. And then to pr it'll let you preview. So now I can hit continue and it'll continue to play. So that is a note. An open-ended question is a short answer question. So here you can give a short answer. Why do you think the man felt this way? Or what was the boy feeling? What was his feeling? Something like that. What made the boy happy? And then I can hit save. You can also click this button here for feedback. So that means when the kids answer, you can then automatically have this pop up. Obviously, I can't spell balloon. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna hit save. It'll preview it for me. It'll show me what it looks like. Here it is. What made the boy happy? He was happy because of the red balloon. I could type in here. That's what the kids would see if they typed in. And then I would continue. All right. Finally, I'm going to show you multiple choice questions. Now, multiple choice questions are my favorite because they auto grade and they work with Google Classroom. So if you assign this within Google Classroom and you have multiple choice questions, they can auto grade and it'll automatically go into your Google Gradebook. So all right, can't spell again, but I type my question and now I have my two answers. Oh, 
Hold on. Let me change my spelling here. Okay. Now let's say I want to add more. I can totally add more right here. I can add another answer choice. Let's say I want to give feedback. So if the kids give the right answer, I can have it say correct. If it's sadness, I can have them say sorry. The bright colors represent happiness. I mean, you guys can see what I mean. And then I can hit save. Now, All right, this is a really cute video. I'm gonna stop right there because this is just practice. Oh, sorry. You can see over on the side, I have video events. It's showing me where my notes are, the times. It's showing me if there's sound. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to read multiple choice questions to the kids. So if you had that, you would want to. Ready? Let's say I wanted to create a, a note and have it be an audio note. I can ask the question here, what do you think the man is feeling? Choose A for happiness, B for sadness. What do you think the man is feeling? Choose A for happiness, B for sadness. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna hit save. And then I would add the multiple choice question directly after that. So the kids can do that. And then I'll see here, it's at 40. I can add it right at 41. So now I'm going to add that right afterwards. And again, it's a little glitchy because I'm on meet with a bunch of people, but then I could add that right afterwards. So that's the only way I figured out to actually um, insert a voice to read the questions. You can see here the notes at, at 40 seven seconds long. This multiple choice question, I'm gonna put 41, so it'll be right after it, all right? When I'm done, I'm gonna hit finish. And then it's gonna take me back to the video. From here, I can watch the whole video, make sure it looks okay. I can assign it directly to my class. I can duplicate it if I wanna make a copy of this. I can delete it or I can edit it again. So I'm gonna hit the sign just to show you what it looks like to assign it to my students. And from here, I'm gonna click on Google Classroom. You definitely wanna have prevent skipping turned on because that will, won't allow the kids to skip to the end. Closed captioning is up to you if you wanna turn that on. And then I'm gonna click post to Google Classroom. So I know because it's connected right here, it's gonna post right on my Google Classroom. I want this due on Friday. So I'll give the kids a chance to watch it. So notice how I scroll down and I'm gonna click on Friday. You have to make sure you do that and then hit save. If I don't hit save, I just hit the date, you'll see it doesn't stick. So when you hit the due date, make sure you go here. You can choose the hour. I don't want my kids staying up that late. So I'm gonna say, 7 o'clock p.m. it's due. This is nice because if you were in school, you can make sure you can have the kids do it by eight in the morning, give them a chance. If they have sports played at night, they can do it the next morning. No, it was an issue. And then you're gonna hit save. So there we go. Now I'm gonna click assign. Now it's automatically assigned to my Google Classroom. Oh, post to Google Classroom. Oh, well, here's the deal. Cause I'm not in my classroom right now. The one thing I found is that when, when, it's, um, when it gives me issues about posting, it's usually because I need to have both links up. So what I'll have to do is I'll just have to post it manually, which really isn't that bad. So to post it manually, I'm gonna go to share assignment. I'm gonna copy the link. And then for my Google Classroom, I'll just post it there. So that is two ways. You don't have to actually have it meld, or if it doesn't work, you'll see you can easily just post right on Google Classroom. 
The thing I was going to show you was, though, um, when it posts to Google Classroom, it posts under classwork. It doesn't post under a topic. So if you wanted to change where it lands, you would have to go in and hit the three little dots and edit it and just put it in a topic. That's the only issue I've really come across with it. So create. I'm going to create it as an assignment. I'm going to add a link. I'm going to make sure to put my topic in there. And give it a due date. I think on mine I said the 17th. And time was 7 o'clock p.m. I want to keep it consistent. And then I'm going to assign it. And now will show up on their Google Classroom. So from there, let me show you. Let's talk about what it looks like when they're done. So I'm going to go into my classes. I'm going to show you some different things. This morning, I assigned this to my kids. And I had them watch it. And this is what they had. For the record, I made Lucian miss one, just so you could see what it looks like. He was very upset about it. You can see that he watched 100% of it. He got an 83 on it. He turned it in on time. Mira, 100%. She watched three hours ago. She turned it in online. I click on th these three little dots. I can reset their progress. Let's say somebody went through and just flew through the whole thing. And I know they didn't do a good job. I can reset it and make them go back and watch it again. Another thing you can do, I wanted to show you, is let's say I go into my old class. You can see over on the side, when you start having more larger classes, six out of eight of my students turn this in. Six out of seven turned it in. Six out of seven turn this in. So let's click on the ruler. So this is one I did with my students last year in my math class. You can see here, this student watched 100% of the video, but she only got 40 out of 100 on the question. If I click on her, I can see exactly how much time she spent on the video. It was four minutes and 47 seconds long, and she spent exactly five minutes. That makes me think she probably didn't try very hard on these last three. So I may want to have her redo it. She got a 40 out of 100, she watched 100%, two out of five questions. I can go through and see exactly what she missed. I can leave comments on what her answers were. I can have her redo it. I can then click to next student and see what the next student did. This student got 100, got all five questions. This student got a 60. So maybe I wanna go through and look at hers, okay. How long is half a foot? So I can hit comment and I can say, oh, be careful. You may want to revisit this part, all right? So it gives you a lot of different options on how to um, look at different views of the grades. That's really great. Let me show you in Google Classroom really quick. So this one right here is all about sneezes. I'm going to view the assignment. Now this is another kicker I found. From Google Classroom, you can see Mira went in, and when she was done, she came in and hit resubmit. And when she resubmitted it, it automatically graded her. Lucian's is graded, but it wasn't turned in. So what I can do is, is I can take his grade, and I can add it, right? So now he's done. It automatically grades it, and his, their grades are there, right? All he has to do and this is the only glitch I've really found with it is when he's done with the ed puzzle he needs to go back to that assignment page
I'm going to log in as him right now, and I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll show you what it looks like on my end. So here I am. He did the Ed Puzzle. He was on Ed Puzzle. He completed it. He got a 100. Now, with Mira, I told her to go back in and make sure she hit the resubmit button. For Lucian, I didn't do that. So it said that he hasn't done it, even though when I go into this assignment on his end, remember, I'm looking at this as a student, as Lucian. He's already done it. I go into view assignment. It says graded, but he has to hit this resubmit button. And then you'll see it says mark as done. So when it's done there, I will come over here. I will refresh my page. Now you'll see two have turned in. They both have resubmitted it. So it will auto grade. Of course, that's with multiple choice questions. To add grades to short answer, you do have to go into each student and click on, click on their answers and be able to add them step by step. This is the one I just assigned to them. You can see they've never watched it, hasn't turned it in. So you can even see if kids have started it for the first few minutes or anything like that. So that's kind of going through a really quick overview of Edpuzzle. Like I said, right now, I am working on, I'm gonna show you right now. This is the Edpuzzle how-to that I'm working on. Um, I'm hoping to have it done by this afternoon. So when I'm done recording this and everything like that, I'll be able to share this with you. And it's gonna be one of those things where as you're going through, you can click on the link and it'll take you directly to each section in the how-to sheet, just like my others. It also has a home at the bottom of each page. So I felt like people have used that to get back to the beginning because some of these are um, very, very long. If you've looked at my how-tos before. Um, so here's the content again on YouTube, makes it really easy. Here's how to do the different cutting the videos, the voiceover questions, et cetera. Um, and then if you're done with that, you can click on the bookmark and it takes you right back to the first page. So that's what I'm working on right now for everyone. Um, the only other thing I wanted to show people is that Edpuzzle actually has training courses for teachers. And if you've noticed on my email, um, I did go through last week, you know, in all my free time, and I did a couple of certifications. So if you do go to edpuzzle.com certifications, you can find online PDs. And I know that, you know, everyone's really stressed and not wanting to do this, but I felt like doing these, I did the Edpuzzle 2, Ed Puzzle Coach, and I did Google Tools. And I was surprised at how well I did with them. I know you guys are probably laughing, like, of course you did, you're the tech coach. But what they did was, is they used Ed Puzzle to teach me how to use Ed Puzzle. So I logged in as a student, and when I did that, it took me through, um, it took me through videos and showed me step-by-step -step how to do things. If you're interested in it, I would definitely suggest, um, doing Edpuzzle level one, two, and coach. The Google Edpuzzle one, I felt like more was an advertisement for Google. It was more like, hey, you should use Google Classroom because it's amazing and Google number one, whatever. But I felt like um, the one was very simple, kind of like what I just did. So you might even be able to start with two. And then coach was the advanced level. The other thing I noticed was they haven't updated it since August and they've made updates to Edpuzzle itself. So some of the things that they teach you how to do, when I came back to Edpuzzle to look for, they weren't there. For example, if you add um, if you add notes, voice notes or anything like that, before, if you did a voiceover, you had to do a voiceover over the entire video. Now you can do a voiceover only just parts and a voice note where you add your voice. That was under voiceover, now it's under add a question. So there are some different things, but if you play with it, I think you could be, it could be pretty helpful. Um, does anyone have any questions at this point? I mean, I've been talking to you for 25 minutes. I know I've thrown a lot at you. Um, let me see if there's any questions in here. Let's see, Amy Potter, can I make 
a video and copy the link to my Google Classroom without the students creating an Edpuzzle account. You cannot. The kids have to have an account, but they just have to log in with Google because um, they have single sign-on with Google. So if you add your Google Classroom, if you're doing it with Google Classroom, Amy, it automatically adds them. So I would just integrate your Google Classroom because then they're automatically added. Most of our kids at the high school level, at least, have already used Edpuzzle. Um, I know for a fact that in eighth grade, um, Kevin Douglas, Sandy Bernard, and I used it a lot. So anyone who was on 8B for the last four or five years, those kids have used it and have accounts. So that sort of thing shouldn't be bad. Even Lucian, when I talked to him this morning, I said, you know, you want to do an Ed Puzzle for me, try it out. Oh, I love Ed Puzzle. So I know they're using it at the younger grades as well, just not as not as fluently. But I know for a fact eighth grade uses it. So well the one team. Are there any other questions for me before I log off and keep working on my Ed Puzzle how to to share out with you guys later? No? Well, if that's the case, sun is shining. My kids are in front of a screen right now. I'm going to go drag them away and take them outside to get some fresh air for them and myself. Um, if you guys do have questions, please feel free to um, email me. You're welcome. Have a great day. Um, try to not stare at screens. That's my advice. Stop looking at screens. <laughs> go hug your children. You're very welcome, everyone. Have a great day.